really love uh, everybody that's here for a second. I just, on behalf of Karen and myself, I'd like to welcome everybody to this great event. We're so excited to have you here. We have people from Colorado, people from North Carolina, people from all over, but we really appreciate you coming. Uh, we'd like to start with a prayer, and I'm going to ask a very special man to do that. Thank you, Ken. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for bringing us together here tonight, tomorrow, to celebrate a wonderful, exciting event. Uh, Caitlin and Nathan getting married. We're so glad for these families and friends. So many people came so far, as Kim was saying, bless them, keep us all safe, and tonight, tomorrow, and over the weekend as we go home. And bless Nathan and Caitlin with a wonderful, wonderful life, decades together. We love you very much, and bless everyone from Craig and Blake. And Allison, everybody's taking such good care of us, and it's going to be a great time of celebration. And we love you very much. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And the first words I heard him say were, <laughs> He was doing stand up comedy in between sets at the Hill Country Bible Church on campus. Uh, and I didn't know him yet, but that was my first introduction to Nathan Miller. And uh, you know, the next year we actually started becoming friends. And so I thought, you know, the first time I met him, he was performing a J.R.R. Tolkien uh, uh, performance, and so why not go back to J.R.R. Tolkien, who um, wrote a series of letters, and in those letters he addressed the topic of marriage, and there were a few quotes from J.R.R. Tolkien about marriage that I thought were relevant here. Um, and the first one is, No man, however truly he loved his bride as a young man, has lived faithful to her as a wife in mind and body, without deliberate, conscious exercise of the will, and without self-denial. So I want to talk about those two things with Nathan, and, and let Caitlin know that she is in great hands with respect to those two things. First, I want to say that during our 10 years, it's, about, it's been about 10 years since we've been best friends, and during those 10 years, we've completely agreed on maybe two things. 
Um, one, that the ending of Lost was bad. And two, that Texas might be back. Stop that! We're back! We're still out on that, but it might be back. Uh, and the reason why is because Nathan is very stubborn and strong-willed. He's got the will uh, to do what it takes to not only chase his dreams and, and do whatever it takes to, to fulfill those dreams, uh, but just, to, just to, to succeed in life and to be there for his family and friends. And there's no situation too difficult, too tough. And really, if there's one person I can rely on, it's him, because I know he'll have the uh, strength and will to do what it takes to get there. He's, I feel like he's incapable of putting himself first. And so whether it was me freaking out about uh, deciding to go to law school in Colorado, or me freaking out about uh, you know, breaking up with me, or uh, whether it was me thinking I failed a law school exam, thinking my whole career track was just going off the rails, he would stop whatever he was doing and, and just walk me through it, let me know it wasn't as bad as it was. And so that's just the kind of guy he is, where he'll stop whatever he's doing uh, and put, put your situation first. And I think that when it comes to marriage, um, he's going to be faithful to you because he has the ability to, to exercise self-denial. And uh, the marriage will come first. And so the second quote that I think is relevant here um, is it says, But the real soulmate is the one you are actually married to. You really do very little choosing. Life and circumstances do most of it. Only the rarest good fortune brings together the man and woman who are really, as it were, destined for one another and capable of a very great and splendid love. So let's talk about these circumstances and the rarest good fortune that brought these two people together. So in 2011, I constantly pestered Nathan about moving to Colorado. I told him that the answers were there. And then three years later, after you know conquering playing football in the snow in negative 15 degree weather, decides that uh, you know he's had enough of Colorado, and he goes to his Colorado-based company and says, "So I really like you all, and I know that you don't have like really anybody in New York right now, but I want to move to New York, and I want us to work for you. So will you please let me work from home in New York?" I thought he was crazy. I think that they're going to fire him on the spot. Um, but you know what? This was destined. And they were destined to be together. And so the, the boss did not flinch. Um, appreciated Nathan's service so much that he let Nathan move to New York City to work from there. And, and so that's already in itself very, very crazy. So even when he gets to New York, Brian Osoya, a friend of ours from undergrad, happens to be living in New York. And so I remember when, when Nathan told me that Brian was setting him up with a girl named Caitlin. And that she had, you know, lived, lived, lived in Austin for a time. I think that's how he knew her. I mean, they were probably meters apart in Austin at some point in their lives. Um, and they didn't meet until New York. And Nathan never gets to New York if he doesn't go to Colorado. He never goes to Colorado. Something in him just doesn't say go. Um, and, and those are the circumstances that bring these two together. But the real soulmate is the one you're actually married to. You really do very little choosing. Life and circumstances do most of it. But only the rarest good fortune brings together the man and woman who are really, as it were, destined for one another and capable of a very great and splendid love. <laughs> to write today and I just thought there were too many memories to count and I was like I don't know how to sum all this up in just a matter of minutes it's, it seems almost impossible but I have a script I'm going to try to stick to it um, so Caitlin and I met doing what we both love dancing um, and teaching at Valley Austin at studios right across from each other but we didn't become friends until years later um, I moved to New York to dance and came home one summer to teach when Caitlin gently approached me and wanted to talk about all things New York. At the time, I was pretty jaded about it and was really contemplating moving back. And she basically was like, no, you need to come back. You need to come back. And I think in her head was like, I need a roommate. I need a roommate. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so we moved into this really tiny um, New York City studio apartment together, um, and literally so tiny it was like bed, nightstands, bed, and we would be like, hi hey, Caitlin, hi. <laughs> together um, and my first memory actually of her just a testimony to like what a cheerleader she is um, as is the rest of her family um, a lot of you probably know the story but she moved in and literally the first day um, a series of unfortunate events happened and a TV just fell on her foot and unfortunately her mom's pinky will never be the same because of that night and it was just such an act of love from her family and also, Caitlin was texting me the whole time, being new roommates, being like, I'm so sorry you might come home to like some glass and some blood, but I swear everything's okay. And I was like, I'm like, she's in a hospital making sure I'm okay because of our living situation. I was just like, she's incredible. Who is this person? Uh, but yeah, she convinced me to move to New York, and that's just like such a cheerleader that she is. Um, okay, small studio, that's kind of huge. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we kind of just um, grew from there. We both did the whole like New York City dance auditioning thing and we like supported each other through that grueling process of being dancers in New York City. Um, and we just had so many memories like that together. Anything from dancing to taking our scary landlord to court and nice. we won by the way. <laughs> about that later. Yeah, we need some legal advice too about that. Um, but <laughs> um, we've just been able to really support each other throughout so many wonderful ups and downs and new careers and falling in love and it's been so wonderful. Um, I wrote down that God has given us each other that I know and me standing here giving this speech is a testament to that goodness, which I know that is so true. Um, and then I said, as Nathan stepped in, <laughs> joyful Caitlin became even more so and she's such a light to everyone that she meets, but I didn't even think it was possible for her to like light up even more. And that's what happened when you came in. Um, Nathan, you've been such a wonderful friend. You brought joy and happiness and rap and Kanye West into our lives. And it's, <laughs> no, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> and it's been super, super wonderful. So I love you both, and I can't wait for many, many more memories together. Hook em horns and cheers to love. <laughs> Yeah, um, hi. Um, I'm one of uh, Caitlin's many performer friends, so I also have a script that I will read. I am not off book, I'm sorry. Um, this is kind of to both of you. Caitlin and Nathan, you're both such wonderful people. I'm not going to cry. No, I'm not going to cry. Um, <laughs> I honestly can't believe how perfect for each other that you both are, and I also can't believe um, like everyone else, that you had to move from Texas to New York to meet each other. But I think that, I wrote here that I don't believe that Caitlin would have it any other way because it is really romantic. <laughs> um, the only other romantic thing I can think of is my couple meeting your couple in Paris, which we did, and that was awesome. Um, Caitlin, I've been waiting for you to meet someone Worthy of your grace, your selflessness, your deep and honest kindness, and your radiant beauty. Not just your gorgeous face and your hot dancer bod, <laughs> but also your beautiful soul. You are sunshine. Nathan, you are a true gentleman. I believe a great partner is someone who reminds you of how wonderful you are, especially when you forget. I've seen you do this for Caitlin many times and make her laugh until she cries. I'm so thankful that you guys found each other and I'm really, really looking forward to the amazing life that you built together. Je vous aime, mes amis. I love you, friends. I don't want this anymore. Almost forgotten. Oh, no, no, no. Just want to get forgotten. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, I do have some blackmail stories, but we still have one more wedding in the family, and she has way more dirt on me. So I'm gonna that. I'm also gonna keep an eye on my mother, which I'm pretty sure probably has the Academy Awards music recorded that they play when you talk too long, and she's probably gonna play it for me. Um, so 
I decided to choose a poem that would be much shorter than any words I had. So it's called From Letters to a Young Poet by Rainier Maria. For one human being to love another human being, that is perhaps the most difficult task that has been entrusted to us, the ultimate task, the final test and proof, the work for which all other work is merely preparation. Loving does not at first mean merging, surrendering, and uniting with another person. It is as high inducement for the individual to ripen, to become something in himself, to become world in himself for the sake of another person. It is a great demanding claim on him, something that chooses him and calls him to vast distance. Once the realization is accepted that even between the closest of people, infinite distances exist, a marvelous living side by side can grow up for them. If they succeed in loving the expanse between them, which gives them the possibility of seeing each other as a whole in the four minute sky. Nathan, I don't think that my mother could have 3D printed a more suitable match for that system. I hope you are prepared to watch and listen to Gilmore Girls every night for the rest of your life. I pass this torch to you. <laughs> Welcome to the family. We love you dearly.
before I even actually became engaged to Nathan, well, I knew, like, once we, I knew I wanted to marry him. Um, if most of you know, sorry, let me go a little back. I'm not a big fan of rap music. Um, Nathan is, though, obviously. So that's, there's been a lot of education in our relationship of rap and him trying to be like it, but, you know. Um, but one thing, and me trying to get into like musical theater, so I wanted to combine our two loves oh. <laughs> and do a little something. Let me wrap an introduction on this lovely night at this awesome venue. Oh, what a sight to a man that I love. Yeah, his name is Nick Miller. He's gonna be my husband and his looks I just get up. The son of Kyle Miller, yeah, he hails from Texas. When he told me he was homeschooled, I said, oh, that's precious. <laughs> and just is what makes what we are about to be married under the eyes of the good Lord. You see, the reason that I love him are more than I can count. So he and all the made ones I thought about. <laughs> Funny, passionate, and lovable. He's a godly man. We both love the office, and I tell him we like you to pay him. <laughs> I'm on a set up blind date. Since then, I became blind in love, and I, he's my one true soul mate. Yeah. The Lord of Brian LaSoya brought us together. Ain't that great? He still buys lots of tickets to come remember in our first date. Well, the word got around. They said, DJ, how's a snack? His sister took to Twitter, but her feed didn't go way back. <laughs> took her home for Christmas so she could meet the boy on bam. The love for him hit me to play on bam. What's his name, y'all? Nathan Kyle Miller. <laughs> It's not Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> but to everyone, he brings joy and fun. But just you wait. Just you wait. What do you think he used to be called DJ Sack? This was a long time, rest assured. I'm trying to whack, rip, bring back. Now in their wedding and you're in a suit, looking such a snack. Oh, when he calls his YouTube football sons, I know it's weird, I'm just going to say the back down. <laughs> Nathan's friends and family, I just feel even more blessed to now call you my own. Um, so that's what I have to say. Nathan? I echo all those thanks. Um, I think I've covered the bases really well there. But no, I'm, uh, I'm really grateful for all of you coming from uh, near and far to be here with us uh, today. We've, um, it, it's been a very fast year and a very slow year getting to here, and it's very surreal to be here with each other and with all of you, and it's just really exciting. I think uh, my main job for this was to explain what uh, That's So Great is. For those who don't know what that is, that's our wedding hashtag, and the short story is on the other side of this building at the Green Cathedral where I proposed to her in uh, January. Uh, that's We set it all up there. She was very surprised. It all went very well. There's a lot of obvious planning and thinking that I did about Gotta get there, gotta, gotta surprise her, gotta ask the question, all that kind of stuff. Didn't really think a whole lot about past that point. <laughs> so I was very well scripted, very well planned, like John Michael said, up to that point. Um, and so I said, Caleb, will you marry me? She says, oh my god, yes. And at that point I blacked out. And <laughs> she, she was crying, and her, my natural instinct whenever she's crying is to try to make her feel better, and I usually do that with a joke. And so, as I was like rising up from my knee, I said in a squeaky voice, that's so great! <laughs> Which is what you want to have for a marriage. So that is so great. All of you are so great for being here, and we're so grateful for you all. Thank you very much.